In chapter two, we read, it was called Night Talk, and we read about Kona the dog and Gwendolyn the hermit crab. And we kind of learned that Gwendolyn is an older, she's almost like a mother to Kona, she seems like. So this is, this is chapter three called Friends. If you can see, here's a picture. And I, I'm pretty sure you're gonna learn that this is Professor Albert. And if you can see the window he's walking by, he's walking by a pet shop. So kind of think about what we're going to read about in this chapter. Kona had been born in the family room of a fifth grade teacher on Paradise Lane. Stumpy had been born on, in a sugar maple near the south entrance of Gooseberry Park. And Gwendolyn had been born in a palm tree on an island somewhere in the Caribbean. It was a miracle that the three had ever found each other. Of course, this was mostly Professor Albert's doing. He was a retired biology professor who loved to grow daylilies and listen to the saxophone. Professor Albert had never married, liked living alone, and all the years he was a professor, he never minded the fact that he had no family. He was too busy teaching the cell structures of amphibians. But after he retired, he found himself home so much of the time he began to grow a little lonely. And when he started talking back to the radio, oh yes, I love outpatient care too, he realized he needed a pet. So he bought himself a hermit crab. She was the loveliest of all the hermit crabs in the pet store. Her shell was creamy white with wavy brown lines flowing across it. She was quite big, twice the size of the other crabs and Professor Albert found her enchanting. So he brought her home from the store in a little paper box, named her Gwendolyn, and became her friend. Gwendolyn turned out to be a wonderful companion. Professor Albert carried her bowl from room to room in the house, depending on what needed doing. If he was in the kitchen baking banana bread, Gwendolyn was on the kitchen counter. If he was in the living room watching television, Gwendolyn was on the coffee table. If he was writing letters in his study, Gwendolyn was on the desk. There's a little picture of Professor Albert making banana bread with Gwendolyn watching. Professor Albert knew that Gwendolyn liked him because she always pulled her head far out of her shell to look at him when he talked to her. Gwendolyn, did you know that each giraffe's markings are unique? As Professor spoke, Gwendolyn's delicate antenna moved gracefully back and forth, and he knew he was, she was listening carefully. Having been a teacher, he was quite good at picking out careful listeners. <clears throat> it was nice having her. Professor Albert was very happy with his hermit crab, and he had no plans at all to get a dog. He didn't know he needed a dog. He had never even thought about it. But one day, one of his neighbors, who had a sister, who had a son in a fifth grade class, of of a woman who lived on, on Paradise Lane told Professor Albert about the teacher's brand new lure of puppies. Twelve in all! Twelve! The professor could not imagine so many puppies. He tried imagining twelve hermit crabs, so many bowls to carry. How did anyone manage twelve puppies? His neighbor said that the puppies were chocolate Labradors. Chocolate Labradors. The professor imagined children finding these instead of chocolate rabbits in their Easter baskets. The neighbor said the puppies were round like beach balls and that they loved to play. They played and played and played. And when Professor Albert heard this, something lit up inside him. Something from, some, from when he was a boy. It had to do with dogs and playing. And before he knew it, he was telling his neighbor, I would like to have one of those puppies. There's Professor telling the neighbor. So Professor Albert found himself in the family room of a fifth grade teacher on Paradise Lane with 12 fat little puppies running all over him and all over each other and all over everything else in the room. He was delighted and overwhelmed and could hardly catch his breath and he wondered how he would ever choose just one puppy from so many. They all looked pretty much the same. Should he just pick one and go? But as he was trying to figure all this out, one of the happy puppies crawled onto his lap and stayed. It stayed and stayed and stayed. The other puppies romped across him, licked his face, and ran off somewhere else. But this puppy stayed. So there you can see a picture of all those puppies. 
And there's the puppy that stayed on his lap. Do you think it's Kona? The fifth grade teacher said to Professor Albert, of, of them all, that's the one who likes to be held the most. He likes company. He'll be glad when he's the only puppy somewhere. Professor Albert smiled. He knew all about liking company, and this little puppy was staying. He took the puppy home. He named him Kona after his favorite coffee. And there in that house, Kona grew up. Of course, Gwendolyn and Kona became the best, best friends right away. Though Professor Albert couldn't understand Gwendolyn's language, Kona could, and very quickly Gwendolyn assumed the job of puppy training. No, Kona dear, you're not allowed to chew Professor Albert's slippers. No, Kona dear, dogs do not eat encyclopedias. No, Kona dear, you must wait until you are outside to do that. Do you want to go outside? Then sit at the door and bark for Professor Albert. That's right, bark. Kona did everything Gwendolyn told him to to do, and Professor Albert said to everyone that raising a puppy was the easiest job in the world. This amused Gwendolyn very much. It was a few years more before Kona met the little red squirrel called Stumpy. Gooseberry Park was a very large park with many trees and many more squirrels, and to Kona, of course, all the squirrels looked alike. Kona went to the park every day with Professor Albert, and while the professor read books about snails and baboons and ants and lilies, listening to Charlie Parker on his Walkman, Kona explored the park and ignored the squirrels. Then one day, he was exploring, as he was exploring, Kona came upon a little red squirrel who was trying to pull a plastic toy tractor up a tree. Holding the tractor in her teeth, the little squirrel pulled it halfway up the tree trunk, but the tractor slipped and crashed to the ground. She ran down to the bottom to start all over again. So here is a little red squirrel, and there's her toy tractor. She's trying to get up her tree, and there's Kona. <clears throat> Kona walked over to speak to her. Perhaps if you pushed it, he suggested, as the squirrel began pulling at the tractor yet again. The squirrel opened her mouth. What? The tractor crashed. Oops, said Kona, sorry. The little squirrel ran down to try once more. It's for my collection, she said to the dog. I haven't anything this big. Do you know what it's called? A tractor. I've seen it on television, Kona answered. Television? asked the squirrel. Kona sometimes forgot the world really did have wild animals in it. He couldn't imagine anyone not knowing what a television was. Never mind, said Kona. I simply suggested you push it. Put your paws on the back and roll it up the tree, just like a boy would. Good idea, said the squirrel, and she pushed the toy tractor all the way up the tree trunk and into her nest. She disappeared inside and was gone for several minutes. Kona started to walk away. I'm Stumpy, the squirrel's little red head popped out from her nest just as the dog was leaving. I'm Kona, called the Labrador, happily turning back. What else do you collect? And that is how Kona met Stumpy. He visited her he visited her at tree every time Professor Albert took a park bench nap, which was quite often. And from Stumpy, he heard tales of life in Gooseberry Park, which he reported back to Gwendolyn, who commented on them in a most, as most elderly animals will. Leave it to a raccoon to make a mess of things. Oh, yes, indeed, crows are quite smart, Alex. There's nothing like a young possum to warm the heart. Thank goodness for rabbits. These comments Kona took back to Stumpy, and in this way they all became friends. It was a fine life, a life just right for babies. Up in the next chapter, chapter four is called Murray. So we're going to meet a new character in the next chapter.